Hey saddle hunters, I've got a brand new saddle to show you today. This is a saddle that hasn't even really hit the market yet, not on their website. Really cool saddle though. It is the Tree Hopper Ultimate Saddle. This is a single panel saddle with a lot of neat features. It's got a pleat and some other just unique design elements that we've never seen in saddles before. So I'm excited to show it to you. Stay tuned. We're going to put it on the tabletop, walk you through all its features, and then I'm going to take it outside, put it on in the tree, and give you some of my thoughts about it. So he, here's how you'll receive the Tree Hopper Ultimate Saddle from Mark. Just like the Recon, he ships it in its own dump pouch. Really nice dump pouch, stiff mesh, good draw, thick drawstring, cord lock on the top, typical hang on style with the tri-glides on the back. It's a large bag though. I've got some I want to compare it to. This is the, the Recon in the bag that it's shipped with. So you can see this is probably inch and a half taller than the one the Recon shipped in. And just for reference, here's a, here's a tethered ES pouch. Um, about the same size as that. So good size pouch. It's, it's wide as well. It's just really a nice feature that Mark throws in. I don't have finalized pricing on this yet. Mark kind of gave me a pre-order price, but this should be at a very competitive price point to other similar saddles on the market. So let me take it out here and we'll show you the features of the Tree Hopper Ultimate Saddle. Okay, so I've got the Tree Hopper Ultimate Saddle laid out here. As you can see, it's got a pretty traditional style of construction. The unique part about this saddle is that it has a pleat in it, which is not unique, but the pleat flips the opposite way of every other pleat on the market. So most of the pleats have the seam on the outside. On this saddle, the middle seam is on the inside, so it opens kind of outward like that as opposed to others that kind of come from the outside and peel peel outward. So interesting design. I don't know if that will make a whole lot of functional difference, but just something to point out. Let me show you some of the features on this saddle. Down here on the bottom on both sides, he's got some molly webbing stitched on, traditional style open loops, five on each side for you guys that like to attach things down low. And then the leg straps are obviously down there at the bottom. He has the same style of clips that we've seen on some other saddles recently, like the Trophy Line Covert Light or the Cruiser. I like these a lot. They're small, they don't weigh a whole lot, but they've got nice affirmative clicks and quiet. The webbing on this adjusts through really, really well. You can just easily pull it to shorten it or, or to let it out. It's got really nice webbing keepers on there. They're not so tight that they're bunching it up like we've seen on other saddles, but they're tight enough that they don't slide down on their own. So I like those. Leg straps aren't overly long, which I like because I have pretty thin legs, but um, I think the leg straps are just done well. If we work around to the side here, you can see that the lineman loops, they're, they're obviously reinforced. They've got the main webbing that comes through and it's folded over, but then it's reinforced with this, um, I'm not sure what it is, another piece of webbing that's got five reflective thread lines going through it. So that's really nice. Makes those bridge loops easy to see in the dark. Just a, a nice touch to add. Moving on to the bridge, this bridge is a rope bridge that's spliced on one side and it's an adjustable bridge because on the opposite side it uses a prusik knot to attach. This bridge goes out to somewhere in the neighborhood of, of 38, 39 inches to the, to the knot there. So a lot of adjustability. You can't tighten it all the way down just due to the thickness of the prusik and, and the splice but you can tighten it down pretty significantly. That's about as far as you can easily get it. So probably about six inches short of, of cinching down all the way. Um, if you look at the top of the saddle here, it has a mixture of these larger, more popular gear loops along with molly webbing. So two molly, one gear loop, one molly, one gear loop, one molly, one gear loop, two molly. So it's a blend. The downside is that you don't have three molly loops in conjunction with one another, which is really what you need to, to use a kind of the style of pouch that it comes with. So I've figured out how to do that. I'm gonna show you that a little bit later in the video. 
The Lyman belt loops I really, really like. They are, are large and they're vertically oriented, really stiff, so they stay open nicely. Inside of those, you can also see there's more reflective stitching. So uh, these are good Lyman's belts. It's a style that we've seen on a couple saddles now, but, but I really like that. They just stay open. The vertical orientation is great. That's a fantastic feature in my opinion. If we flip the saddle over, I'll show you the waist buckle. Really nice waist buckle. Doesn't have any markings on it as far as load ratings go. It does say that it's a patented product, so I'm not sure who manufactures it. It adjusts really easily. Once again, there's good webbing keepers on both sides, and you can adjust it just the same on each side. So pull it tight, cinches down well, but it also lengthens pretty easily. Buckle opens smoothly, easy to close, doesn't really rattle and make much noise at all. I like this buckle, seems to work really, really well. So there you can just see a quick view of the other side. The other feature that's unique that I wanted to point out to you guys is that right here on the front, on the point of the hips, Mark has added some padding. And for you guys that experience hip pinch kind of on the front of, of corner of your hip, these will be really, really nice in cutting down on some of the, the pressure that's there, even if it's not extreme. So we'll talk about that a little bit more and how that works once we get it out in the tree. But just wanted to give you guys an overview. You can see how the pleat works from the inside, just kind of like your traditional, but, but opposite. So let me show you how I wear this saddle, and I'll give you a couple pointers that I figured out with it, and then we'll take it outside to the tree. So I wanted to just share with you guys a couple of the, the tips and the tricks that I've learned to wear this saddle when I'm walking in to make it as comfortable as possible. So first thing I do, I just take the bridge and I cinch it down as tight as it'll go. Like I said before, it only goes about six inches, but it pulls the Lyman belt loops in tight enough. And then you can just take the, the back end of it and wrap it around. And uh, I like to just slip it underneath the belt keeps it keeps it out of the way so it's a pretty streamlined saddle for walking in but as you guys if you've ever worn a saddle walking in before you know the leg straps are often kind of a pain if you've got them loose like this and they hang down your thighs they can kind of cause you to, to snag and just impede your movement so that's a hassle but then if you take them and tighten them down to get rid of that impeded movement then you kind of get this bunching effect right here underneath your legs and that's just kind of uncomfortable and nobody likes that so what i've been doing with this saddle to kind of counteract that and it's worked out really really well i'm taking the clips of the leg loops off letting them hang down and that just wears really really well you can hardly even tell you've got it on but you've got those leg straps hitting you in the back of the legs so i take them and I'll show you this in a little zoomed in view here as well, but I take them and I just put them up through the middle gear loop. And they stay there and I can walk around just fine. Here's what I do with the leg loops for the walk in. I basically just take them and I feed them up through that middle gear loop and they'll They'll, for the most part, stay there on their own, but if you want a little security, you can just use a Night Eyes gear tie to wrap around there. Let me show you what I do with the gear tie. So this is just a 12 inch Night Eyes gear tie. I just slide it through there, fold it over, wrap it around once to give it a little security, and then I, I like to run that up toward the top so that it's running parallel to the top of that gear loop. And then I can just wrap it around the top of those, those two clips and that'll keep those from falling out of place. Makes for a much more comfortable walk in. So the other thing I wanted to show you about wearing this saddle in is, is kind of where to place your bag or your pouches. You can see that the last front bit of the saddle on either side is not supported by the belt. The belt is stitched in probably four inches back from the point of the saddle. So if you attached your pouch right here on these front linemen or molly loops rather on either side, it would just cause it to, to sag down 
and, and I don't really like that. So I'm going to show you how I attach the pouch a little bit further back using one of the gear hangers and one of the traditional molly loops to, to make it more comfortable and, and get the sag out of the way for the walk-in. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to flip that through there. I'm going to run my zip tie underneath the gear loop and through the lower part of that tri-glide. And then on this first one, I'm going to go through the tri-glide so that I've just going around the middle part of the tri-glide. I'm going to cinch it down. And I'm going to rotate that all the way around so that the square part of the zip tie rests right underneath the bar there. And I'm going to leave that there for now while I attach the second one. The second one then is going to be similar. I'm going to run it around the gear loop, but I'm only going to go through the bottom half of the tri-glide and then I'm going to go over so it goes over the top bar. Same thing though, cinch that down and rotate it around. And then I'm just going to pull them tight so that the square part sits right underneath the bottom. Cut them off short as I can. So you can see that that is prevented from flipping over or riding up at all. So that'll keep that in super a super tight position and allows you to get the pouch in such a place along the belt where it's it's pretty much completely supported. So that's pretty much how I hook up the tree hopper when I'm ready to walk into the woods. I'm going to take it out now, show you how I use it on the tree. All right, we're outside. I'm going to give you guys a few thoughts about the saddle while I've got it on here on a tree. First off, I want to talk about the pleat. The pleat is not the greatest design in the world, in my opinion. It, you can just see, even just standing here, it has a tendency to just kind of fall open. So it does not stay real tightly closed. So that's kind of a downside. I, I like the pleat to stay nice and tight, and this one just doesn't do that. Uh, a couple other things to mention here. The... Uh, bridge has a lot of adjustment. I, I like a shorter bridge so I've probably got it about 20, 22, maybe 24 inches right now. I'll just show you guys. When you sit down into this, that's kind of how I've found it to be most comfortable. If I were going to sit, let a little tether length out. Now when I sit in this saddle, like I would just any other ones, I feel a little bit of pressure predominantly along the, sh the, the strap right here where it wraps around your body. That's right where that padding is. But I kind of feel like the padding almost doesn't come far enough forward to relieve some of that pressure. I think it helps, but other saddle designs, I don't feel that pressure as much. So I, I get a little bit of pressure on the front of my hips. And so what I try to do is run this top strap or a piece of webbing rather, above my hip bone. When I run, make sure that it's above my hip bone, it cuts down on that as much as possible and it's, it's pretty comfortable, but, but it is a factor. The other thing I'll mention to you is that I don't feel like this saddle distributes weight all that well. So when I'm sitting here in it, I can feel a lot of pressure here in this bottom strap and then again up here in this top strap, but I don't feel like this, this webbing carries a lot of the pressure. Um, I don't know why that is. I think it might be the style of mesh that's used. I've used other mesh saddles where I, I feel like they provide a little bit more support. Maybe that's because the mesh is a little bit more rigid, but this one I just feel like most of the weight you wind up feeling it in the, in the straps. So that's something to be aware of. I don't feel like this is, is a super comfortable option for sitting. I've tried a, a lot of saddles that were, that were better than this. And then even for leaning, I get a, a lot of pressure for some reason under this bottom strap and there's really nothing I can do to adjust it. There's no adjustments on the saddle and the bridge is just fixed loops. So you can't adjust the bridge up and down to shift that pressure away. So not a lot of adjustability if you do get hot spots in this saddle. Mention a little bit about the lineman belt loops before I get down here. The lineman belt loops are 
pretty far forward on the saddle. They're in the right position. They're, they're wide open, easy to access. I like those a lot. So those are some of my thoughts on the tree hopper saddle. It's constructed well, but I just feel like it's not the most comfortable option that I've ever used. So take that for what it's worth. All right, so that's my review of the Tree Hopper Ultimate Saddle. I hope that's helpful for some of you that are considering a new saddle. Stay tuned. I've got a couple more saddle reviews coming. I've also bought a Shikar One Stick that we're going to be looking at with the Monarch platform on the top. So that should be coming along the pipe in the next couple of weeks here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We appreciate your support.